late afternoon from work and uh, thought it'd be fun to, to crank through uh, some list comprehension. So if you're just starting to get familiar with Python or maybe you found this because you were searching for advent to code day two solution, come on, you should have figured this out yourself. It's only day two. Uh, maybe you'll have fun with this. So they present us with a kind of a spreadsheet of some kind. They call it a spreadsheet. And this is a row to be clear. So this is one row. This is another row. This is another row. They basically say that they want you to find the, the max number in each row, the min number in each row, and uh, take the difference between them, and then take all those differences and sum them. And the answer should be around 45,158. So I figured this would be a fun little problem to solve in Python. Uh, and I think we can solve it in just one line of code. Um, I did solve it like a week ago, but I did want to go back and, and do it live. I'm not looking at anything, so it might be a little haphazard about it, but um, let's crank through it. So essentially, the first problem we need to deal with is the awkwardly structured data. How do we even get the point? How do we even get to a point where we're dealing with a row of data? So I'm just going to start everything with a list comprehension. So I'm going to say we need to split on a new line for x and data. And what that's going to give us is uh, some kind of some kind of structure that we can work with, right? So if we split on a new line, what does that give us? Not much. So what might we want to split on? First, let's try just x for x in data. What does that give us? Nothing really good. What if we split on data and we split on a new line? Okay, that's, that's looking a little bit better. Still, we have a lot of tabs in there. So maybe we split that on a tab? All right. So now we're getting somewhere. We have this structure where it's kind of like we have a, a list of lists. And the first list, if we just take a look at it, should be this row, the first row. 86, 440, 233, stuff like that. You know, row one for the second row, it's 3466, 3952. You see the pattern. And yeah, so we've got this thing now. So for each thing within the nested list, we need to figure out the max and min values. Now, the first problem you'll notice is that these are not, uh, these are not integers, so we can't subtract strings. So one thing we could do is, since this is an iterable, we can use the map function. So we can map the integer function to each element in that list. That's going to return an instance of a map object. I'm using Python 3.6, and I think this means it's kind of a generator expression where it kind of, it's not doing anything in, until you call something on it. So if I call a list on a generator expression, it should exhaust the generator. Now that actually gives us numbers. So for instance, if we go back to our first row, now we have numbers 86, 440, 83, so on, so on and so forth. So the next thing is we need, we kind of need the, um, we need to figure out how to start unpacking the max and the min. So let's try to do this. Um, max j for j in. Well, that's not, so this is where sometimes it gets tricky to use very nested list comprehensions. So max j for j in, and let me put another bracket out here. Okay, so that works. So those are the maxes of each row. Now what if we wanted the mins of each row, and I wanted to put it in a tuple. Okay, so now I have the max and the min and J was referring to basically the list of integers for each row. So this is kind of like how you, you know, get the uh, this sort of very long Python list comprehension working. You sort of start from the, the inner part, fiddle around with it, 
maybe use some functional programming to apply functions to, to different iterables within there. And then you start kind of extracting your problem. And the one thing we know about the max is it's always going to be bigger than the min. So really, I don't need the tuples. I just wanted to show you that. I'd like to do a subtraction to be the max minus the min. And then we can simply call sum on the list. And that gives us 45,158. So hopefully you thought that was kind of neat. Uh, you could have obviously created several intermediate data structures and looped over data and stuff like that. And in many other languages, this would have been a little bit harder. But uh, this is kind of the nice thing about Python, all done in one line, quite easy. So I hope you enjoyed that. See ya.